welcome to another amazing episode of King's Court, the gang fit for a king. Let's meet today's contestants. First up, we have Robbie. Robbie is a first time player, but a long time fan. How long have you been watching the show? Calculating. I've been watching the show for approximately 10 years, three months, eight days, four hours, and seven seconds. Well, that's great. Eight seconds. Okay. Nine you, you seconds. Like that? Okay. Well, uh, let's move to our next contestant. Jacob, welcome back to the show. So far, you've been on the show twice with no luck. How are you feeling about today? Yeah, Gary, well, I haven't had much luck on this show, but I've been studying and watched a bunch of episodes of the show, and I think today's my day. Well, let's get started with today's game. The rules are very simple. When I ask a question, if you feel you know the answer, please buzz in. If you get the answer correct, you will get a point. If you get it wrong, you will have to spin the wheel a woe. And don't forget, at any point in time in the game, if you hear this sound, that is the clue cue sound, which means we will stop whatever we're doing and jump to the next clue. Are you ready for the first question? I am ready for all possible interrogatory. Yeah, I just hope I can keep up with Robbie here. Well, let's get started with question uno numero. What does it mean if someone wears a crown? Robbie. My hypothesis is that someone wearing a crown represents someone in royalty, meaning that they are in high nobility. In response, others must genuflect appropriate. That is incorrect. Robbie, you said a lot of stuff, but that is not exactly what our judges were looking for. Okay, he knows a lot of big words. Was there a book I had to read? Well, if you are missing something, Jacob, hopefully you can gain that in this next clue. Let's go over to the history corner with Professor Pontificate. Oh, uh, welcome to Professor Pontificate History Corner. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I was not ready. The Book of History. I'm not, it's right in front of me. I should be wearing my glasses. I am wearing my glasses. Okay, okay. So what shall we learn today? Let's see. Have you seen one of these before? What is it? That's right, it's a cross. You've probably seen one of these here before at church or around someone's necklace. The cross is famous for one and very important specific reason. Jesus died on a cross. In fact, it would have looked a lot like this, except much, much bigger. Now, he wasn't the only one that died on one of these. In fact, the cross was punishment that was used on a lot of very bad people. And if someone died on a cross, people walking by or people that found out about it would think that that person is very, very bad. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jesus was good. He never sinned once in his whole life. Why would they have put him on this cross? See, that's a good question. And the good news is this. There's more to the story. Let's see what the big book has in store for us. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Did you believe this is coming out of this book? Ooh. Rocks are quite important. Now, why did I bring out this rock? Why is the big book of history talking about this? I don't know. Because back then, they didn't have graves like we do here. Here, when someone dies, they bury the person and cover them with dirt. They couldn't do that back then. When a person died, that was very important back in Jesus' time, they would put the person in a cave. That was, because it was hard to dig in the dirt back then. There was rocks everywhere. So they dig a hole, no put them in the cave, close it with this rock so they would not be disturbed. Oh, one moment, let's see. Oh, you know what this is? This is actually a good thing. It's a crown. Who wears crowns? Kings and queens, of course. But do you know what crowns actually represent? Victory! It's true, crowns represent winning. For example, if you see someone in the Olympics and they win the gold medal, they sometimes put a small crown on top of the head because they are winners. They won the victory. They beat everyone else. And you're probably asking yourself right now, what do crowns have to do with winning? Well, a lot actually. In fact, I think you should keep your eyes peeled was someone else wearing a crown in the Bible story today? Check it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Professor. All right, here's the question once again. What does it mean if someone wears a crown? Robbie, go ahead. Based on the information provided by Professor P, I believe the answer to the question is that a crown represents victory. That is correct. The first round of King's Court goes to Robbie. Jacob, do you know what that means? I unfortunately do. Say it with me. Spin, Spin that, that wheel. wheel! 
Jacob, you landed on silent disco. What that means is for the next two minutes, you have to put these headphones on and listen to some dancing tunes. But I won't be able to hear the question. Yep, that's how the wheel works. Go ahead and throw those headphones on. Jacob, can you hear me? Jacob, can you hear me? Okay, all right. On to the next question. What did the sign on Jesus' cross say? Oh, this is an amazing question. You see, to fully understand the sign affixed to the cross, we must Ah, oh, drat, I was just getting started. Oh no, I was so looking forward to hearing more. Well, let's go to our second clue. Here it is. One night, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying to his heavenly Father. He said, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus knew how bad things were about to get. But even in the face of certain death, he obeyed and honored his heavenly Father. That's when Judas, the disciple who betrayed Jesus, showed up with a crowd of armed men to arrest Jesus. <gasps> one of the disciples drew his sword and Ugh. cut off an ear from one of the men. But Jesus said, put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. He said that God could send 60,000 angels to rescue him. But then the scriptures about his sacrifice would not be fulfilled. Jesus was taken to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where some of the religious leaders had gathered. The chief priests and the council were looking for someone to lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But they couldn't find any evidence that Jesus was guilty. Then someone spoke up and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest questioned Jesus about this, but Jesus kept quiet. Then the high priest asked if Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And that's when the religious leaders lost it. They accused Jesus of blasphemy and said he deserved to die. So the religious leaders took Jesus to the governor, Pontius hmm. Pilate. Pilate listened to everything. He didn't think Jesus had done anything wrong, so he was going to release him. But when the crowds became angry and shouted, crucify him, Pilate gave in and ordered the Roman guards to take Jesus away. Jesus was mocked and beaten. Then he was forced to carry the cross that would be used to crucify him. The Roman soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross and raised him up to die. Some people in the crowd mocked Jesus, saying, If you really are the Son of God, then save yourself. But Jesus knew he had to die to fulfill God's plan. At noon, Darkness fell over the whole land until three o'clock. Then suddenly there was a great earthquake. Rocks split open and the curtain in the temple that concealed God's holy place split down the middle. Then Jesus cried out, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last breath. Jesus was buried. And for many of his followers, all hope seemed to be lost. But then... On the third day, two women came to visit Jesus' tomb and found that he was not there. An angel appeared and told them that Jesus was raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Then the woman ran off to tell the eleven disciples. Jesus went to his disciples. He explained to them that his death and resurrection was part of God's plan to save the world from the curse of sin. He said that anyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Then Jesus said, Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Oh, that wraps up clue number two. Jacob, your time is up now. You can take those headphones off. Jacob. Jacob. Jacob! <laughs> Oh, what? You can take those headphones off now. Oh, is it, is it that time already? All right, here's the question one more time. What did the sign on Jesus' cross say? Robbie, do you want it in Greek or English? English, please. Okay, of course. The sign on the cross reads, Jesus, King of the Jews. And that's two points for Robbie. I'm really sorry, Jacob, but it's time to spin the wheel of woe. Spin that wheel! Uh-oh, 
This one's a doozy. Jacob, for the duration of this next question, you will have to hold this gigantic spider. <laughs> hey, good one, Gary. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not joking. Spider, I'm not. That's not a little spider. That, that's, 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 not, that's not so little. That's a, that's a big. All right, here it is. What kind of king is Jesus? Jacob. I um lost the spider. Unfortunately, that is not. Wait, wait, what? How did you lose the spider? Well, he was here, now he's not. Well, maybe you could just look around and find him. Nope, nope, uh, too scary. You know, to, what, what if he's there? Well, well then let's just let's just go to the next clue, shall we? But Gary, we haven't gone to the clue queue yet. Da ding! There it is. Okay, let's go. Somebody make sure Jacob doesn't run away. And can somebody please find that spider while you're at it? All right, contestants. Imagine someone you love a lot. Have you ever done something that hurt them? Maybe you were supposed to clean your room and didn't. Or you said something unkind. When we do something that hurts someone else, what happens to our relationship with them? It gets torn. You probably know that feeling. Maybe you have a brother, sister, or best friend who did something that hurt you. How did that make you feel? Did you feel all buddy-buddy and want to snuggle? No. When someone sins against us, it causes a tear in our relationship, just like this. Sin causes what used to be united to be torn apart, and it does the same with our relationship with God. There's actually a really important story about this in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, we read about two people named Adam and Eve. They lived in the Garden of Eden, a beautiful place that God made for them. God put Adam and Eve in charge of taking care of everything, the trees, the animals, the land, all of it. The only thing God asked was that Adam and Eve didn't eat from one tree in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I know, that's a weird name for a tree, but do you know what Adam and Eve did? Instead of obeying God, they chose to eat the fruit from the tree. This was the first sin. Just like when I tore my picture, this moment caused a tear in their relationship with God. Because of this tear, Adam and Eve could no longer be close to him. So they had to leave the garden God created for them. Fortunately, that's not the end of the story. God told Adam and Eve that one day, someone would come and destroy the evil of sin and restore our broken relationship with God. I bet you can guess who that is. It's Jesus. In our Bible story today, something absolutely incredible happened. Jesus died and then he rose again from the dead. It was the single most amazing moment in human history. But the story gets better. Did you happen to notice what Jesus was wearing while he was on the cross? The Roman soldiers made a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. You remember what crowns show us, right? Victory! Just like when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, Jesus' crown shows us that he is a different kind of king, one who wins the victory through his own death and resurrection. Remember, sin separated people from God, and no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't put it all back together on our own. We needed help. We needed someone who could be victorious over sin and death. We needed someone who could fix the tear. But here's the thing. In order to fix our torn relationship with God, Jesus was torn on the cross. And because he was torn, he can be the one who brings us near to God. But believe it or not, it actually gets better. You see, Jesus doesn't just repair what was broken by sin, he actually replaces it. He takes what was old and gives us something completely new. That brings us to today's big idea. Jesus is the triumphant King who gives me victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus triumphed over sin and death, we can also be victorious. Because He loves us, our triumphant King shares His greatest victory with us. All right, back to the show. And we're back from the final clue. Robbie, Jacob, are you ready for the final question? Um, have we located the arachnid? Yeah, where's that spider at, Gary? Guys, let's just focus on the question. All right, what kind of king is Jesus? Jacob. Okay, if I answer this correctly, does that mean I will finally win? Will I be the winner of King's Court? Jacob, if you answer this question correctly, yes, you will indeed win King's Court. All right, the answer is... Well, it looks like Jacob decided to take a little nap. So question goes to you, Robbie. Based on the information I collected from the third clue, 
and the Bible story and the historical investigation from Professor Pontificate, I believe the answer to the question is, Jesus is the triumphant king who gives me victory. Correct. Congratulations, Robbie. You are the new ruler on King's Court. Do you have something to say to the folks back home? Well, I'd like to thank the math club for all their support and the history club. Oh, and the librarian, Mrs. O'Donnell, and my mom too. Hi, mom. All right, everyone. Well, that does it for today's episode. We'll see you soon on King's Court. Until then, can someone please help me find the spider?